Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, so what do you think about marriage? <laughs> you just looked at one aspect of it. Mm. What are your thoughts now? Single people, married people. And just put it in the chat. Your honest uh, opinion on marriage. I need to hear from you. From what you've seen so far. What do you think? Um, okay, I'm waiting. We can ask the newlywed. <clears throat> Seems like you have to prepare a lot. Yeah, Jeffina. Yeah, it, um, it definitely, you know, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, just knowing that one has to prepare and, uh, and preparing. So it's not an impossible situation, right? Um, see, we are looking at all the things together. <clears throat> so it might sound a little overwhelming. Oh, wow. You know, there's so much to it. But the fact is that, um, yeah, there are areas, there are strengths as well. You know, all of us have strength, strengths, areas of strength, areas where we are we are strong in, and we can relate very well to the other person. But uh, knowing that there are areas which need to be worked on, uh, just knowing that is a, is a first step. <clears throat> and the second step is, of course, you know, working at it intentionally. And, and uh, yeah, so preparing for it is is good. Okay, anyone else? <clears throat> Georgia. Uh, you can ask the newlywed, Anita, John Paul. Um, Subhashesh, what do you think <clears throat> from what we've studied so far? Um, Okay, you're still uh, collecting your thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it's good. I think uh, if you're thinking about it, well, that's a good thing as well. <laughs> the danger is not thinking about it, right? So if you're thinking, okay, uh, so this is what marriage is, it involves this, um, it's good to think about it. Okay, right. Okay, but never forget that... Um, the God is a design of, designer of marriages, right? So he's a uh, he's a good God. Uh, he's the one who designed it. So his design is good. Uh, and uh, well, there are other things. Our own flesh. We know, you know, uh, the nature of sin, how what it is, and uh, and of course we have, uh, you know, the powers of darkness, Satan, and, and his cohorts. Um, all trying to pull down, you know, what God means to be a good thing, or trying to distort what God means to be a good thing, uh, or God what uh, God meant to be a good thing for you know for a man and a woman. So you know, just never forget that you know that we have God's backing um, in this, right? Okay, so um, so we looked at uh, when 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 we need to you know personally manage our lives first of the thing one of the things that we saw was uh, our career itself okay let me just share that um, and then we'll move on okay <clears throat> okay so the uh, the first thing so was um, career and when and then we close by saying you know uh, what about um, you know if there's a need for well their husband to be working elsewhere um you know we have a typical situation where let's say the wife needs to work somewhere and the husband needs to work somewhere and uh, it's a long distance thing uh, you know so is that good you know after all uh, you need money uh, it's important that you need uh, you know finances and so it's a good thing just for for the sake of the family for the sake of uh, you know children you know uh, is this kind of sacrifice okay right 
So the thing is this, you know, uh, while we know that there are sometimes these situations can't be avoided, but you know, as a church, as a ministry, what we always recommend uh, for married people is that, uh, well, maybe there are, you know, you know, there are situations like this. So uh, maybe you can take about three months, three to four months to work through this, right? Maybe the husband needs to be there. Maybe the wife needs to be there. Uh, you know, in some cases, it's like uh, the husband's is, husband is working and then uh, the wife needs to get a visa to join the husband or the other way, uh, you know, a different country and all those things. So uh, the thing is to work at it you know, and not let that be a permanent thing, right? To work at the family being together, to work at the, spa, the husband and the wife being together. So uh, whatever time frame, you know, maybe it's three months is ideal, okay? You work at it and then say, okay, in three months, you know, but sometimes we know that it goes beyond that. But then also to suggest that uh, this is what we, you know, as a church, as a ministry, recommend um, very strongly that, the husband and wife should not be separated because of work, because of uh, career, uh, because uh, the primary thing, you know, for them, the marriage should be given priority, right? For the family to be together, uh, because uh, when, because of physical distance, you can say today, you know, we are connected, we have social media, but because of physical distance, a lot of other things happen, you know, maybe it's the breeding ground for, you know, premarital, uh, or, I mean, extramarital affairs and, and all those things, emotional dependence on, a, on another person, um, you know, all that happens because of this. So um, when, you know, this is what we highly recommend. Okay, what is the other thing uh, when it comes to uh, management of oneself? Okay, uh, it's, it's important how one handles finances. Okay, money. Uh, are they able to, uh, first of all, earn, save, invest? Um, are they able to live in the, within the means? Or is it like, you know, end of the month, everybody, uh, you end up, um, you know, end up borrowing, etc. cetera. Uh, also, you know, uh, is the person very tight-fisted? And saying, okay, this is my money, that is your money. Uh, but when it comes to finances, do we have a, you know, a, this is our money because I'm earning it, this is in my account, but you know, it's our money. And uh, whatever be the, um, you know, need for spending, maybe it's a, it's a, you know, let's, it's like a big investment or, a, you know, a big uh, thing that we need to spend, okay, to have that mentality, to have that mindset, this is ours. Uh, well, God gave me the strength to, you know, uh, to uh, earn this, or he brought it in, uh, into our lives. But uh, you know, this is ours. So we we plan it, we pray, we plan, we decide, and we spend it. Right. So to have that kind of a mentality. Okay. The, another, another very overlooked resource is time. Right. So time. Um, uh, as individuals, are we able to manage our time well? Because now. Um, because of one more person, let's, let's say even if you're a single person, you know, if you're a single um, uh, unmarried person, then there is the necessity to manage your time well, right? Uh, to be uh, skilled at that, uh, to make sure that you have a schedule, to make sure that you're able to, um, you know, maintain your spiritual life, um, to to be able to give priority priority to be able to give priority and prioritize you know time in church time in the word uh, prioritize time uh, for uh, for the work or study right for the family so all those things you know as uh, as an as a single person you know uh, to be strong in that because when you are married when you there's another person and they have their own schedule so you need to be strong uh, in managing your time to be able to plan and uh, spend you know time together right uh, so time we see is an important resource so to be able to do well planning goal setting um, one very important aspect of time is punctuality right um, uh, am i always late do I find that as a challenge? Do I find it a challenge to you know, get up in the morning? Do I 
find it a challenge to discipline myself to go to bed at the right time so that I can have enough rest to be able to get up in the morning. You know, all these things uh, come uh, related to time, right? Um, so uh, time management. A very important thing then the other thing is the household skill you know these are again some some things which are overlooked um you know when when it comes to running a family running a household there are bills to be paid and these bills need to be paid on time because if these are, bills are not paid then normally there is a you know there is a there is a fine that is attached to it or a discontinuing of the services you know you don't pay your electricity bill then the electricity is cut off if you don't pay your you know the internet or you know your phone connection and then, um, that is taken away and uh, these greatly inconvenience us right or if you don't order uh, whatever fuel you are using you know, for cooking maybe it's a gas or stove or gas cylinder or you know in whatever way maybe gas is piped in whatever you you know there is a cutting away of those services, a stopping of those services, which again put a lot of stress in. You know, and it, it's inconveniences not only you, but also the rest of the family, uh, you and your spouse. So uh, you need to be able to do that, right? Uh, so paying bills, um, well, keeping the place clean, you know. Um, maybe we didn't even think about it, right? Um, well. You could be a person who's extremely organized, extremely, you know, clean. Things, uh, everything is put in its place. You know, clothes are all ironed and folded and kept. You know exactly where things are. Or you could be the extreme, right? You, you, every time you need to search for a thing, it's like, I mean, every time you need to find something, you spend about 15, 20 minutes searching, right? Because you've just thrown it. Well, the thing is this, you know, being able to keep things clean, uh, keep things organized, uh, because there's going to be another person living with you, right? So um, if and if that person is organized and you are not, then that's going to create some some kind of a conflict. And if that person is highly disorganized and you are very organized, that also is going to, you know, create some conflict because you know you are constantly picking up you're constantly cleaning things and the other person is making things dirty and you know so household skills like uh, and even skills like cooking laundry uh, shopping um, you know these are things that we don't normally talk about but uh, it's true you know in some people's life you know somebody might say hey i never bought a single thing uh, a single I never brought a single piece of I mean single item in the grocery list which is true for me you know like uh, my my parents did that uh, we never had to uh, go and buy a grocery because there was someone else to do it all the time so the minute I moved out of my house uh, for work um, that's when I realized hey I didn't know much right um, how much normally how much does a you know a, kilo of onions cost or tomatoes or potatoes I, I, I was clueless so um had to learn you know how do you how do you even choose an onion you know is it okay uh, which is a good which is which is a good one which is not i didn't know so i had to you know it was a learning for me when i moved out of the house so so these are some things that we might take for granted but um it's it's good to know these things right uh, so personal management, again, household skills also come into uh, uh, are a very important factor. Okay, then, uh, okay, I'm just checking if there are any questions, any comments. Okay, not right. So then the other thing is um, uh, relationship skills. Okay. So what do we mean by that when we say relationship skills? Okay, um, you know, when we look at uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 3 and 5, we see that uh, uh, Paul is instructing and it's uh, his instructions are uh, when it comes to people doing life together or it's, you know, uh, maybe it's in the, it's a church scenario, maybe it's a house, from a family kind of scenario or work professional kind of a setting. But, you know, just let's read through this. Um, chapter 2 verse 3 don't do anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast this is the message uh, this is a good news version um but be humble towards one another 
always considering others better than yourselves and look out for one another's interests not just for your own this attitude the attitude you should have is the one which that Christ Jesus had okay so to in order to establish a good healthy relationship in marriage with our spouse so there needs to be you know this at when it comes to our attitude when it comes to our communication right um we need to have some skills maybe we uh maybe we are uh, you know um we 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 do not talk to the other person at all you know we just maybe just keep to ourselves well marriage involves communication marriage involves speaking to the other person marriage involves uh, uh you know this whole thing of trust how does it build how the whole thing of um, transparency or intimacy how does it happen when we start by communicating right when we begin to share when we begin to share things about our lives our life our who we are our uh, likes our dislikes our everything about ourselves when we share with the other person that is when um, you know the whole thing um, starts so uh, i mean uh, so communication is a very important thing it's crucial in marriage you know because uh, sometimes people say okay i'm i'm living in the same house we're under the same roof but there's no communication right there's no communication at all it's just a uh, very uh, transactional interaction okay okay this needs to be bought fine we'll buy it did you buy this did you get this you know um are you are we going here are you ready shall we go it's just that a very transactional interaction okay and communication is broken down you're not sharing about feelings you're not sharing about fears you're not sharing about the future um you know your dreams desires maybe something happened along the journey and and everything is shut down or you know if if you're not married then you, you know you don't want to you know you don't want to share these things because either you don't trust or whatever you know whatever reason or you're not used to right and so we need to consider okay um yeah i need to get over this fear i need to get over this inhibition and uh, i need to be able to communicate okay share talk to the other person okay so um um the next one roles in marriage okay i need to be prepared which means i need to understand what is what is the role of a husband what is the role of the wife you know we're going to look at uh, there's a chapter on this um so understand okay as as the husband as the wife um you know what are my roles is it you know, providing for the home uh, spiritual growth of uh, everybody in the house um okay for running of the home the op, you know effective uh, let's say uh, operation of everything that's happening Well, there are some skills um and it comes under you know uh, typically a relationship skill am i you know am i a good team leader am i a good team player right do i do we support each other you know, all these things right so um we need to Uh, consider this you know for i just i just want to share here that uh, you know i worked initially with a with an with an organization which was a sales uh, uh, you know my role uh, in, the, in that organization was in the area of sales so i was a sales person so which means that every day i had to meet a lot of people a uh, lot of clients talk about the product talk about talk about the company uh, you know and offer the goods and services and you know all that right and uh, make a sale come back so this was it so by the time i came back uh, this was the early days of marriage right so uh, my wife was not working then so she was at home so by the time i came back she was all you know excited to see me and she wanted to you know uh hear from me about uh, my days uh, you know how my day was and she wanted to speak uh, you know tell me how her day was and 
and i was not ready you know i was just not ready at all i was not ready at all to talk to her because emotionally i just didn't have the strength right physically emotionally i was just drained i was like just leave me alone you know don't even talk to me i don't you know i don't even have the ability to listen so um so that was a tough thing you know i had to get over that i have to, i had to un and and i also all those years of being single so i it was like i could do whatever i want right i could just i could just decide okay guys you know uh, i'm just going i'm just sh shutting out the world you know i'm just going to be my myself well now i'm married so i need to be able to handle that well i'm just getting to know my wife and uh, so i need to be able to communicate that communicate my, what my wants are what my desires are and what my problems are what my difficulty was right to be able to communicate that despite the way i was feeling and and say okay um, you know i just need to rest for some time it's it's not that i have anything against you or anything just you know, to be able to do that right so uh, it's it's very important okay so i'm just talking about you know skip back to communication um roles again right roles in marriage uh, you know what are what are some things that you can do what are some things that i can do and uh, readily taking up certain responsibilities okay i'm good at this so let me do this let me handle this at home where these things need to be clean well let me do that oh, some things need to be cooked okay i i don't have no expertise in this area so you know can you handle that right so an understanding of that so that would mean that you first talk you communicate you come to a place of understanding right so it doesn't happen automatically many times we think that oh that person should understand that person should know how i feel well <laughs> uh it doesn't happen that way right it's it's fantastic you know uh when that happens intuitively you think and maybe you care and you do that but it doesn't happen all the time right you need to share and you need to uh, well communicate with the person and share that right okay um so we looked at roles in relationship the roles in marriage and on also you know our uh, interactions and our is a relationship with our in-laws okay which means um, you know my wife's parents and uh, you know the, the relationship that my wife has with uh, my parents right what the interactions that i have with my wife's parents and so on so in-laws now the again we need to consider that hey this, these are um, these are folks whom we should treat with honor and respect and they are my spouses parents elders and uh, you know they have taken care of my spouse they have taken care of my you know brought her up and uh, brought him up therefore you know uh, and the word of god is very clear that we need to honor uh our parents and so she should honor her parents and uh, i should honor mine as well and i should honor we should honor each other's parents respect each other's parents you know? right so um while we do that also the thing is to um clearly define right we saw marriages for two people only and then if there is a third person or is a, if there is a group <laughs> you know in that circle and it's going to put a lot of stress so uh, with uh, you know with regard to in laws clearly defined you know boundaries okay hey uh, yeah thank you for the advice you know about how we should spend our holidays uh, but we will decide that right but thank you for the advice thank you for the everything that you're sharing and but we'll decide that you know um thank you uh, for the offer that you want to you know buy this for the house or you know this particular color furniture but you know please um i thank you but uh, you know we have other plans you know we don't want that right now we we'll let you know you know things like that right so in an honorable manner and not really snapping at them you know not putting them down but in an honorable manner to say that uh well now as husband and wife uh, we we have decided and this is what it is and and so to have that so to be able to have that one needs to trust one another right and i remember remember a piece of advice that um, the person who actually 
you know, took us through premarital counseling, shared uh, this pastor. So he shared something very important. He said, you know, he looked at me and he said, you know, you need to, my wife, uh, my wife's father passed away uh, when she was in college. So it was her mother looking after her and, uh, you know, all that. So, um, so this, this pastor looked at me and he said, you know, you need to make sure that you do the best for, you know, her mother. You make sure that you do the best. You have her best in mind. You do the best for her, um, no matter what, right? Uh, in all your conversations and everything, don't put her down. You have the best for her, right? Maybe there are things that she needs. You take care of those needs. And um, well, he he did the same thing uh, for um, um, for for my wife as well, right? He looked at her and she, she he said, you know your husband's your husband to be you know his parents you do the best for them honor them you do the best for them treat them treat them with respect and make sure that uh, you don't put them down or um, you know so this was very valuable advice because when we decided to do that right when we told each other okay this is what we're going to do when i made up my mind and said okay now now it's a difficult thing and we know we know it's a difficult thing because uh, well people being who they are they might have their own you know your own faults own uh, own things they might have their own characteristics you know maybe they are pushy maybe they are the same whatever whatever it is you know i just made up my mind that i'm going to honor and, and so also my wife she said i'm going to honor i'm going to respect them now, ir irrespective of how they are going to communicate and how they are going to behave right so we're going to respect. So when when each of us had confidence that you know, when I have the confidence that my wife is not going to disrespect my parents, and my wife is going to always um, you know think the best of them and do the best for them, and when she, my wife, had the confidence that okay, my husband is going to do the best for my mother, you know that she's single and well uh well there's no one to look out for her but uh, my husband is going to make sure that uh, you know he'll do this best right so so there was no insecurity in that area right so when it came to defining the boundaries it was it was so easy and it was, it was so easy to say that hey this is what we have decided this is how we are going to spend time you know the to top it all you know um you know, I, I don't know. This might, um, you know, as uh, uh, for Indian families, it might make uh, you know, it might be able to understand it a little better. I think I'm not sure. So Georgia and Lubega and the others, uh, uh, you know, I'm just sharing this. So the thing is, you know, both our fam parents, um, like her mother and uh, my parents, we we lived in the same hometown. You know, they lived in the same hometown at that time. So whenever we came home for you know our Christmas. Uh, holidays, vacation, whatever vacation, there was a lot of pressure. Okay, um, in the sense, hey, Christmas lunch, Christmas dinner, which family do we choose? You know, is it uh, husband's family? Is it the wife's family? Hey, but we all, you know, normally uh, Christmas dinner is always with with the husband's family. You know, all those kind of things. So uh, initially, it was tough. You know, whenever we visited. Our hometown maybe it was just for a couple of days and you know spending time uh dividing the time between the families and all that it was it was really tough but but because we had this understanding hey we're not going to disrespect i'm not going to disrespect your mother and uh, so also you know i had the confidence she's not going to disrespect my parents and uh, and so it was easy for us to decide okay hey Let's go here for lunch. Let's go here for dinner. Let's spend this time here. Mornings, let's spend here. Second half, let's spend here. Let's stay the night here. It was it was easy, right? But if if that uh, confidence is not there, then it's going to be tough. And the in laws relationship with in laws can be very very uh, uncomfortable. Very very uh, I would say even bitter. Like uh, a lot of fights and a lot of things. So I, I can just boldly say that, uh, you know, uh, the relationship with my mother-in-law, you know, like, uh, yeah, we do joke about it. We do, you know, have our uh, disagreements, but uh, really it's it's a very friendly, you know, relationship. And I can say, and so also, you know, I've seen my wife interact with my parents and, 
uh, now my father's no more and my her interactions with my mother and you know very friendly and um, and even you know she speaks to her more than i would speak to her so you know it's that it's that that level so i praise god thank god for that for that advice for that advice and uh, when we went through our premarital time which really helped us through these years yeah so almost two decades and and more so it's really helped us through these years right okay so preparing relationally in all these areas is is very important okay um when it comes to relationships also um you know in in certain scenarios well it becomes um it, it becomes unavoidable to uh, not stay you know uh, unavoidable to you know to stay separately you know normally we highly recommend okay you as newlyweds you need to you know start your own home and uh, you know stay separately etc sometimes it's not because maybe there's a there's a parent who's unable to take care of himself or herself and um and there's no one else except you know um, except maybe you and you're married and of course your parent needs to live with you or you need to live there so in such cases um well how again how clearly would you define those boundaries about time spent and etc it's it's a it is a challenge right it's a it's it's a challenging thing but it has to be um again these boundaries have to be well defined understood uh by both the husband and the wife so that there are you know there are no um there are i won't say there are no conflicts but you know you know that um, you know the, what the expectations are and you know how to resolve you know these kind of conflicts okay then the other thing okay we looked at four a four areas um let's just move on any questions here so far any questions anything that you might want to add or maybe you're from you know uh, a different culture uh different uh, you know completely different ethnic background so you have a different culture so you can feel free to share that as well and i think it'll be it'll be good if there's anything um please go ahead nothing at all okay okay i don't see anything on the chat okay right let's uh, let's move on okay so um in this uh, whole thing of preparation we're just going to look at uh, you know three more things uh before we close uh one is uh, the whole aspect of overcoming the past okay whether it's uh, yeah <laughs> john paul is soaking in okay thanks john praise god um yeah um okay overcoming the past okay when it comes to overcoming the past um you know is it uh, some kind of abuse or some kind of trauma some kind of negative experiences now the thing is you know we know that um, stuff happens right um even in the most protected of environments there could be something that's hap uh, some maybe some abuse physical mm -hmm abuse maybe there's an emotional uh, abuse that has happened and because of which we are broken you know physical abuse could be you know uh, maybe some kind of a rape or some kind of a, you know physical um, uh, uh, abuse some something you know of that sort um and maybe it was just just one instance and maybe it was a, it was a repeated thing you know whatever it is um the fact is that um emotionally maybe the person is broken like maybe maybe emotionally the person has a lot of scars and uh, maybe that was not shared at all you know it's so secretive so shameful you know you think it's very shameful you think that you're the only person that you know to whom it has happened so um you've not got reached out received help uh, you've not even spoken about it to another person now here comes um uh, you know the person to whom you're going to be married to and um, this thing seems to be like a wall right you're not able to be you're not able to emo emotionally relate like be close to that person 
because you've been hurt by another man or you've been hurt by another woman right so it's something of the past right uh, a trauma of the past a negative experience of the past an abuse of the past right sometimes abuse happens in the family and it could be an abusive father an abusive mother whatever it is right now what do we do you know we're taking that into the family into the marriage do you want to take it into the marriage the answer is no or you know have you taken it already into the marriage well the thing is uh, it has to be dealt with right? it has to be sorted uh, because you don't want the marriage to suffer right you you already know hey there's some tension because of this but you feel helpless and you're saying that i i, I can't do anything I, don't, I can't seem to do anything about it i don't know where to get help right well the thing is it it needs to be dealt with okay um look at isaiah 43 and uh, verse 18 we'll just look at uh, uh, you know both the versions maybe we look at king james i'm sorry new king james first uh, isaiah 43 and verse um, 18 okay um, the lord says do not remember the former things okay nor consider the things of old okay um, well, you might say lord it's so easy to say but so difficult right um verse 19 behold i will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it i will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert okay if you look at them uh, you know the um the message version it says but the lord says do not cling to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago right verse 19 watch for the new thing that uh, i'm going to do it is happening already you can see it now i'll make a road through the wilderness right through the wilderness and give you streams of water there so the lord's promise uh, well lord's instruction in verse 18 is do not cling to the things of the past you know forget those things of the past uh, do not remember the former things okay so that's an instruction now obviously we need the lord's uh, leading guidance empowering to to forget because our mind has been designed to remember right um and now we need to forget that means that um, even though we you know some this is how you know we can look at it you know we even though we do remember those um those events you know it can't be erased completely but they don't trouble us anymore in the sense the pain is not there anymore and we see it and we we just remember the healing that god has brought about and we remember the strength that god has brought about and the restoration that god has brought about when we think of those you know uh, those events when you think of those traumatic events right so um, the lord says don't don't cling to it okay second one is the lord is going to do a new thing and what is it he's going to prepare a way a way out and it's right through that wilderness right right through that difficult environment but he's preparing a way and uh, and it's a it's a it's a it's a road it's a it's a road through the wilderness it's a way out and um it's a new thing right um and and the lord is saying okay this is what i'm going to do. right in the midst of that environment i'm going to prepare a way out and you're going to walk uh, on it and come out of it and um, you will see those things like uh, what you did not even experience uh, what you do not even expect it's a uh, you know streams of water there some uh, refreshing in that hard and harsh environment okay the lord's promise so uh, so the thing is that if we have gone through that kind of um, unfortunate event of the past and we have questions we have hurts we have bitterness you know the thing is the lord is promising that he will take us out he'll bring us to a place of healing and wholeness um, so what do we do you know we don't stay there right we don't dwell on the past but we we take the lord's hand and even as we walk, we walk through the that pathway that he has, walk on the pathway that he has prepared, and we come out, right? Uh, we journey to healing. It's a journey. We, it's a journey that we make. We, it's a journey of healing, and we come out whole. We come out strong. Okay, so um, it could be abuse. Um, so we need to 
we need to make sure that intentionally we come out of it heal you know we um come to a place of you know just um unburdening ourselves onto the lord and saying god i, I just went through this and maybe you know the best thing to do is to maybe uh, attend uh, a session with a christian counselor uh, someone who is trained someone who's gifted someone who's uh, anointed in that area and say uh, i need i need help okay now a lot of counseling is available online um, um you know apc itself has a, um, has a counseling ministry so could do some of these uh, sessions uh, and then come to a place of healing right and uh, so not stay in that place okay um second thing could be okay let me just put that up okay uh, it could be addictions substance abuse uh, addiction to uh, substances um it could be addiction uh, addictive behaviors uh, addictive lifestyles you know like gambling etc so uh, compulsive behaviors and so on you know so these things also uh we need to deal we need to deal with it right and not say not think that okay uh, oh, oh i'm addicted to smoking i'm addicted to alcohol it'll uh, i'll be fine i'll be fine once i get married i'll be fine no you won't be fine in fact it's going to be uh, it, it'll get activated right okay maybe there were negative home environments and experiences where you know where we were in an abusive household where uh, our parents were not the best of examples you know it just happens you know we didn't get to choose our parents right so unfortunately maybe they knew the lord they did not know the lord one knew the other one did not or whatever Right, whatever be the circumstance uh, maybe they were not the best of examples okay maybe there was abuse in the family maybe they, we saw our parents fighting uh, we saw domestic violence um, maybe there was unfaithfulness infidelity in the family maybe there was abandonment you know all that what we have seen sometimes we we learn those behaviors right? i i remember um uh, it was just quite recently you know um, like I got upset about something, and uh, and the way I spoke, you know, my wife said, "Hey, you sound just like Uncle. You sound just like your dad." <laughs> you know, my dad was upset. He would, you know, he would use a certain tone, and uh, you know, and uh, she said, "Hey, you sound just like your dad." But I I, uh, I wasn't proud of it because it was a negative thing that she was saying, uh, you know, um, and the fact that I had absorbed some of those things but the thing is this it's all we learn these things you know as children growing up in that environment we pick these up these are caught we didn't even realize it right we pick this up it became part of our lives and uh, when we face a certain scenario we it just comes out where did it come from i don't know it's it's there you know in, in an unrenewed part of my mind it is it was there hidden all along and then just just pops out so um so that's why the psalmist says no lord um in my uttermost yeah, you do you desire truth in the uttermost you know, part of my being right so uh you know we can ask the lord lord just search light of your truth god uh, let it shine in me and uh, wherever there needs to be change god you change it there needs to be strength ch change it God. and uh, and yes you know these areas we need to definitely uh, it needs to uh, you need to think about uh, so maybe it was you know growing up in a home it was it was not it was not the easiest right but you can you can make a change uh, you can renounce those things um, uh, and then you know make a fresh start okay and also when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to the past okay we looked at it right we looked at reno renouncing the past um maybe there were relationships in the past okay um maybe not just one but multiple relationships maybe emotional relationships maybe physical relationships now how do you deal with it right so the preparation time actually is very important right um especially for uh 
especially if it's done with a counselor, you know, who walks everyone through this. And, and we need to understand that or ask ourselves the question, have I truly cut away those ties? Do I still keep in touch? Emotionally, am I still attached? Right? Have I renounced, you know, all contact? Or am I still carrying, you know, um, uh, carrying some of these things and I, do I still think or do I still desire? Um, do I still, am I still, you know, in, in touch with, um, with, with such people with, uh, of the past in my life, right? So maybe a past relationship, you know, like a, like a boyfriend, girlfriend, or maybe uh, it was, uh, it was a serious relationship emotionally, physically, and then, you, you know, it, for some reason, there was a breakup, but then in some form or the other, you know, you're still maintaining contact and all that needs to be cut away completely, right? Um, because marriage is for two and two people alone. So then there needs to be, you know, repentance. There needs to be um, renouncing of all that completely, um, surgically, in fact, right? And so that you can move forward in your marriage okay so married people you know we need to be careful you know are we harboring any such um, you know even emotional relationships um you know maybe in at present you know in our interactions maybe it could be a, uh it could be a you know at our office it could be our you know maybe where you work where you're uh, maybe a place of business, even, you know, church, ministry, you need to be careful, right? Um, so we need to cut away, put away, so that it doesn't affect the health of our marriage, okay? Okay, then um, last two things uh, is, um, you know, purity. When we say purity, we're talking about, you know, physical uh, intimacy, sexual purity. Okay, so um, break, breaking free of all sexual addictions, uh, breaking free of all, um, you know, uh, anything that is a sexual perversions, uh, breaking free of it. So, you know, pornography or, uh, you know, masturbation and uh, all that, you know, breaking completely free, right? Because uh, we see, um, you know, that verse that I just put up, that we saw earlier. Okay, Honor marriage and guard the sacredness of sexual intimacy between husband and wife and husband. God draws a firm line against casual and illicit sex. Hebrews 13, 4. Right? So we see that God is serious. And God has designed marriage in such a way that uh, the physical aspect of it um, is within marriage. It's not outside of marriage. Right? So. Um, you know, we look at that and then sexual intimacy it's 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 not outside of marriage but it's it's in marriage only okay. um, the bible is very clear you know that god is a designer of you know he's the one who designed marriage which means the physical part of marriage aspect of marriage which is sex he designed it right but he designed it in such a way that it, it is within the bonds of marriage, within the confines of marriage. So it is not outside of marriage. Right? It's not premarital or it's not extramarital, right? but it's within marriage itself. Okay, um, so uh, what about um, other things like, um, you know, uh, whether it's uh, pregnancy, uh, childbirth, infertility. You know, these are things that we need to, um, you know, be prepared for. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, children, when it comes to, you know, when uh, when are you going to have children, or if there is a challenge in that area, you know, how are you going to address that? Will you believe God? Have faith in God? for a miraculous intervention or you know are you going to think of any other methods um, so you know talking about all that uh, is very important um, and not just um, not just leaving it not just brushing it aside okay because, because these are real things right and these are real challenges as well okay uh, well we're going to you know look at this uh, the physical aspect of marriage um, you know a little later okay 
Okay, the one last thing, um, Christian maturity, calling, and ministry. Okay, let me just quickly go through this. The thing is that um, when it comes to spiritual growth, um, you know, um, do you take responsibility for your own spiritual growth? And uh, will you, um, a as a, a spouse, you know, contribute to the spiritual growth of your, your spouse, you know, uh, of your companion? Will you help in any way? And uh, how can you do that, you know, without controlling? How can you do that without... Uh, uh, interfering uh, in their spiritual growth, you know, being an encouragement. Um, and if the, if, the, if the husband, you know, husband is the spiritual head of the house, so uh, are you taking that place of leadership and how will you steward that, right? So preparing for that. Maybe you, you never thought of it that way, right? You never thought that you'll be the priest of the house, right? So you you think of, think of that and we, maybe, you know, you're just saying, okay, I'll, I'll just leave that all to my wife. You know, let her take care of it. Or the wife is saying, okay, uh, you know, I, I don't want to have anything to do with this, right? So we need to understand, okay, what is the Lord calling us to? Uh, how is the Lord calling us to steward, you know, spiritual growth in the family? You know, when there are children, when um, you know, and and also when it comes to calling, when it comes to um, you know, the God's call uh, for us individually and as a couple, you know, how are we? stewarding that okay um, we'll pick it up in our next class uh, this last point and then we'll continue okay so we'll stop here and uh, take a break and uh, thank you we'll come back for our biblical preaching class okay god bless see you guys